Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, the person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Susan Burton grew up in housing projects in East Los Angeles. In her childhood, she was surrounded by violence and crime. Eventually, she had a son named Marquet, or KK, as everyone called him. KK's father abandoned them, so it was Susan and KK against the world. Susan loved her son more than anything else, and she desperately wanted the best for him. It was a day like any other in April 1981. Susan picked KK up from school, and they walked home together. KK was playing in the yard, Susan working in the kitchen. KK ran into the house and gave Susan a beautiful chrysanthemum. For you, Mama, he said, and then he dashed back outside. Susan was looking at the chrysanthemum when brakes wailed and tires squeaked. KK had run across a sidewalk and been struck by a car. KK died. How can anyone handle a tragedy like that? When I think about it, I want to hold my three-year-old son as tightly as I can and tell him how much I love, love him. I can't fathom the pain, the guilt, the anger, the loss. For years or decades, the Israelites wandered in the wilderness. The land they had been promised was never quite around the next mountain. Moses kept leading them in giant loops through the desert with no discernible destination. The Hebrew people were impatient, they were tired, they were angry, so they began to complain and sow seeds of discontent. In the passage Marsha read for us a few minutes ago, we hear that because the Hebrew people had been unfaithful, because they had undermined Moses, God infested this community with poisonous snakes. And these snakes began to bite people, and people began to die. Parents were dying, children were being bitten, and as a result, the Hebrew people were facing pain and uncertainty and suffering. After the death of her son, KK, Susan Burton was also facing unbearable pain and uncertainty and suffering. She didn't have a cohesive family where she could find support. She didn't have access to good counseling. She didn't have a church community a place where she could find people to love and embrace her. So instead, Susan turned to alcohol. And when that wasn't strong enough, Susan Burton turned to drugs. But nothing could make her pain go away. Susan explained, my days had no meaning and my nights were sleepless. I was afraid to sleep. I would see KK's face, hear him calling to me. I tried everything I could get my hands on to alleviate my pain. This desire to alleviate the pain we're in, many of us have felt this similar impulse when we're facing suffering. We want to run away from our pain. We don't want to think about it. We want to jump from the place we are right now in the middle of our suffering to some idealized future when we tell ourselves we won't feel this pain anymore. We want our pain to go away, to disappear, to be done with. 
And this is what the Hebrew people wanted also when these serpents began to bite them. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. Notice what the people are asking. Take away the serpents from us. Please just take away the pain. Take away the suffering. Get rid of all the brokenness. However, when Moses prayed to God, God told Moses to do something strange, to make an image of a snake and put it on a pole and to lift it high so that all the people could see. God was telling Moses that the people needed to see their pain. They needed to acknowledge their brokenness not running away, but confronting the darkness that beset them. Susan Burton tried to run away from her pain. Alcohol and drugs were the best tools at her disposal, and her life spiraled out of control. Susan was trying to pay for her addiction however she could. She forged a check and was arrested and sent to jail. She was released and then rearrested a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time. With $100 in her pocket, Susan Burton stepped off the Greyhound bus that had taken her from the jail to downtown Los Angeles. This was her sixth time getting out of jail. That night she met up with an old friend. I can't keep on like this, Joe. Susan confided over a beer. I'm 46 years old and my life is a big sum of nothing. If you really mean it, Joe said, I know a good place you can go. And he wrote down the name of a treatment program. Two days later, Susan entered this rehab facility in beautiful Santa Monica. They had medical staff and nutritionists and career advisors. They also had psychologists and counselors and chaplains who worked with Susan, helping her to look into the darkness, to confront the pain of her past. And for the first time in more than a decade, Susan began to really talk about her son, KK. Susan began to talk about her own childhood trauma and pain. The Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And then God told the people, look at the serpent. Look at the snake. Look at the darkness, the brokenness, the source of your pain. Don't be afraid of it. Don't run away from it. Don't avoid it endlessly. God's promise we read was, everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. Look at it and live. Back in the rehab facility, Susan learned not to be afraid of her brokenness, to acknowledge instead the reality of her pain and suffering. Susan began to find healing and new life, but she wanted to do even more. She wanted to help other women who were struggling. So Susan started working and she earned enough money that she bought a house. She converted this into a home for recently released female offenders. Susan went to the bus station where parolees were released and she began inviting people to come stay with her. Soon Susan had 10 women living in her home. She was losing money hand over fist. In 2000, she formed a nonprofit called A New Way of Life and she received a major grant multiplying the positive impact she could have on those around her. 
Today, there are thousands of women whose lives have been transformed because of the work of Susan Burton. Each year, she gives away over $2 million in goods and services to women who are trying to escape the cycles of poverty and pain and addiction and incarceration. Now, Susan Burton's story is inspiring, but many of us may be tempted to say, it's not really relevant to us. It's not relevant to me, it's not relevant to you, it's not relevant to those of us who are in this cathedral or who are, or who are living in Jacksonville. We may say, my child hasn't died. I'm not addicted to drugs. I haven't been in and out of jail. But if we're being really honest, don't all of us have brokenness in our lives? Don't we all face suffering that we can either choose to run away from or suffering that we can choose to acknowledge and confront? Haven't we all been bitten at some point by the snake of regret or guilt or pain? Maybe you lost a job and you find yourself thinking, I just can't go there. I can't process that. I can't think about that. Or maybe you are in terrible financial difficulty and you say to yourself, I just can't think about how we got here. I just can't think about what happened. All of us face pain from our past, places where we're broken, and God often calls us to respond to the brokenness in our lives by looking at our suffering, by acknowledging it, by bringing it out into the light, by lifting up the snakes in our lives and looking to them, trusting that if we do so, we won't die. There are clearly facts that are unpleasant in all of our lives, facts that we may even want to run, run away from. Even in the beauty of this cathedral, there is brokenness. If you take a moment to look around the church at some point, you'll notice that our stained glass is filled with images of what I like to think of as surfer dude Jesus. Jesus looks like he belongs on a California beach somewhere. He has long, blonde, windswept hair and ocean blue eyes. He's tall with washboard abs and perfect biceps. And Jesus is very, very white. In reality, Jesus was a dark-skinned Middle Eastern man. However, we've been uncomfortable acknowledging this fact for so much of our history. And frankly, this is a sign of our brokenness. We have a parishioner, Patrick Kimball, who looked around the cathedral every Sunday for years and saw these unrealistically white images of Jesus and the Holy Family. And instead of ignoring this shortcoming, instead of running away from this painful fact, Patrick really looked at it. And eventually, Patrick felt inspired to do something. Teresa Harrison, a wonderful artist, wrote an icon of the Madonna and Child, meaning she painted an icon. This icon has stood in the cathedral for, for many years. So Patrick commissioned Teresa to write a new icon, an additional icon of the Madonna and Child. But with this icon, to make sure they were dark-skinned. Today, in just a few minutes, Edward Harrison, Teresa's husband and the former dean of the cathedral, will bless this icon as we make it a permanent part of the cathedral. You see, because we at the cathedral have not been afraid to confront the brokenness of our past, we are laying the foundation for an even greater future. After all, this is the message that God taught us through Moses. And frankly, this is also the message of the cross, that Jesus Christ was tragically crucified, and yet God calls us to look to the cross 
And through the crucifixion, this most horrible event, God brought about goodness. And that is the message for each of us. If we take what is most broken in our lives and we're willing to look at our suffering and allow God to work through our pain, God can bring goodness out of it. Susan Burton still carries the pain from her past, but she, looks, but she looked at her snakes and she accepted God's grace and she didn't die. Instead, she was given new life and a renewed purpose. In 2019, the governor of California pardoned Susan Burton. Susan Burton no longer has a criminal record. And that's what God has done for each of us through the cross. God knows that we are broken and imperfect. We're sinful. But God has pardoned each of us. God has pardoned me and God has pardoned you. And God is calling us to not flee from the cross, to not run away from the pain in our lives, but to confront the reality of our suffering, to look at the serpents, then to pray to God to transform our, pray, our pain, to give us new life and renewed purpose, and then to use our brokenness to serve those around us and increasingly transform our community so that it looks like the kingdom of God. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Amen.